This is North Petherton. 600 years ago, a man called Geoffrey Chaucer lived here. What was it like to live here in those days? What did the houses look like? Around about then, these two houses in North Petherton were one single house. Let's go back to medieval times and see what it was like to live here when the house was new. This is a medieval house at the Weald and Downland Museum in Sussex. It is very like our old house in North Petherton. Inside the big front door we see a big room called the hall. In the middle of the floor is a fire that is used for cooking the meals and keeping warm. There is no chimney. Everything high up is black with soot. The smoke from the fire rises up and finds its way out through a gap in the roof. There is no glass in the windows, so the house is cold and full of draughts. Wooden bars are there to stop people from climbing in the windows and there are wooden shutters that are closed at night. The furniture is very simple. There are benches and a table where the family sit to eat. There are plates and pots of clay and pewter. Meals are eaten with a knife and spoon because forks have not been invented yet. The earth floor would have been covered with rushes which could be changed when they became dirty. At one end of the house there was a ladder that led up to a bedroom. A wall of wattle and daub kept out the smoke from the fire. Wattle is woven sticks and daub is the name for the mixture of wet clay and straw that was spread over the sticks to make a smooth wall. Inside the bedroom is a bed with a straw mattress and a cradle for the baby. Clothes were stored in a chest. What kind of food did they eat? How did they cook their meals? Most meals were pottage, which was a kind of thick soup or stew. Into the pottage went, well, whatever was growing in the garden at the time. It might be things like leeks, onions, cabbage and peas, perhaps thickened with a bit of flour. It would be flavoured with herbs like rosemary, sage, parsley, mint, coriander, basil or margarine. Poor people rarely ate meat, but this house was home to a yeoman farmer, so there was a bit of tasty bacon from their pigs to add to the pot. The pottage was cooked in a big metal pot that was hanging over the fire. The housewife would have baked fresh loaves of bread in the bread oven. The bread oven was a brick-lined hole that was often built into the thick wall. A fire of sticks was lit inside to make it hot. When the fire had gone out, the hot ashes were removed and the bread put inside the hot oven to cook. Around the house you would find things like a spindle and distaff and wool for making clothes, as well as thimble and thread for sewing and mending. How was a house like this made? A house was made of what it was standing on and what could be got nearby. This house is made of cob. The red clay underneath the soil was dug up and mixed with straw and a little water. This mix was then stamped down into a space formed by wooden planks. After a few days, 
when the cob was hard, the planks would be raised and another layer added on top. When the walls were finished, huge wooden beams were placed on top and the roof was topped off with a thatch of reeds or straw. Today the old medieval roof beams are still stained dark with the soot from those fires so long ago. Inside the house, the walls were painted white with a paint made of burnt limestone. It forms a coat as thin as an eggshell over the red cob. A house like this has no foundations, but the walls are very thick and strong. Outside in the garden, there would have been herbs growing for medicines as well as food. There would have been vegetables to eat, a pig or two, and hens. There would have also been a midden, a smelly heap of poo, kitchen waste and rubbish. The midden was where the chamber pots of wee and poo would have been emptied. Lovely. Would you have liked to live in that medieval house so long ago?